Hey guys, how's it going? We're out in the greenhouse this morning getting ready to start some seeds using the winter sowing method, which is something I tried out for the very first time last year. And I feel like based on my experience last year that I can change some things to maybe do it a little bit better. So I just wanna give you my thoughts on my experience last year, as well as show you the things I'm gonna change and then also talk about the things that I liked about it. It is raining though here. Let me show you what it looks like outside. It's kind of died down maybe a little bit. But for us in Eastern Oregon, any rain is awesome. Yeah, we're kind of down to a sprinkle at this point, but it's kind of dark. It's not super cold. It just feels really good to be out here. I love it. So winter sowing is essentially just starting our seeds outside really early and kind of letting them wake up almost naturally. We are providing a little bit of protection in that they each get their own individual little greenhouse. But the things I really like about winter sowing and the things I think make it really good for a lot of people is that one, it doesn't take up any space inside. Two, it doesn't require any special equipment. You don't have to make any investment in any grow lights, seedling heat mats, um, shelving, any of that stuff. Any of the seed trays, you don't need it. I mean, we are starting these seeds in recycled water jugs. You can use milk jugs, orange juice containers, whatever allows light to penetrate. Uh, and also it creates really strong seedlings. I did notice that about last year. That's one of the benefits because they are put through more adversity. They have to go through more cold. Um, they have to go through more inclement weather. They're just gonna be stronger for it. And the rain does sound like it's starting to pick up a little bit. So if you can hear it and it's really loud, I'm sorry. Um, but the last thing is that it's really low maintenance. So we pre-moisten our soil, plant our seeds, water them in, and essentially you can set them outside and because we allow the lid to stay off, um, they can catch any snow or rain or moisture from nature and it eliminates the need for you to have to constantly monitor them for water. And that's one of the things actually I'm gonna be doing differently this year. Last year I started my seeds in a seed starting mix because that's just what I'm used to doing. That's what I use inside to start my seeds and it's a loftier soil blend that makes it really easy for the plant's roots to establish. But when you put them outside, even, even though it's raining today, typically it's really dry here. And when I used the seed starting mix, it just didn't stay moist enough and I had to water them quite often and I had to monitor them that way. So this time I'm using the regular, this is organic potty mix here. Several of you suggested that I use that and I might even top mine up with a layer of vermiculite, which helps keep moisture in and just kind of maintains moisture levels really nicely for me. So let me show you how to prep your container. This one's already done, super easy. The first thing I did was I popped four drainage holes in the bottom just using my razor blade here, it was super easy. This plastic is really flimsy. Drainage is a very important though. You wanna make sure that these containers can drain, starting to get a little rain inside <laughs> condensation. And then I took my razor blade and started cutting right here, kind of below the handle and went all the way around and stopped just shy of the handle again so that I have like a little hinge here and that's just super helpful so that they stay in one piece still. And then I did take the lid off. You can toss the lid. We don't need that at this point. And these are actually reusable. So, I mean, you can either gather up through the year um, or you can clean the ones from last year and use them again. I have this bag full of water jugs and then these three. So I'm basically gonna just plant until I have no water jugs left. So before I actually start planting the seeds, I kind of want to talk about the type of seeds that you can be starting right now. You want to look for anything that's like hardy in your area, hardy perennial flowers, even annual flowers that are really cold tolerant, um, things that need a cold period in order to germinate. Like I just got my buried treasure strawberry seeds and it actually recommends on the back of the package to uh, put them in the freezer for three to four weeks before sowing, which is perfect. So they can be outside in the cold freezing temps and then they can wake up naturally. Um, so those are the types of things. So today we're doing like bread seed poppies, amazing gray poppies, echinaceas. I had really good luck with artichokes last year. I'm gonna do some ornamental kale, some larkspurs, uh, things like that. And you can start a lot of your vegetable seeds this way too, especially like the cold tolerant things, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, those can be started now because they can handle quite a bit of cold. I would probably wait on things like tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, those heat loving things. I would wait until maybe next month to winter so. We're doing ours a little bit earlier even than last year, one week earlier because we're due to have a baby here in two weeks and I really wanted to have some of these things buttoned up and planted. And it's kind of a way because I don't know what life is gonna be like after baby, I have very lofty plans of still starting a bunch of seeds inside. 
um, but you never know. So I thought, well, as long as we've got some of these water jugs outside kind of just working away for us and we don't have to maintain them, that's kind of just nice to know that we'll have some flowers and things ready to go. Okay, so I've already got some potting soil in this bowl right here. You can see it's got a little bit of moisture in it actually already, but I want to pre-moisten it a little bit more than this. So I've got some water here. Doesn't take a lot. You don't want it to be sopping wet. I always start with a trowel and then I end up mixing it with my hands. It's probably what's gonna happen today. Yeah. Pre-moistening soil helps in a couple of different ways. First off, it helps you maintain moisture right from the gate because you're not having to um, water kind of fluffy, dry, powdery soil once you get your seeds in there. It's really hard to get it fully saturated without dislodging your seeds. And that's the other thing. Last year, I put way too many seeds in each one of my water jugs. I just seeded the whole thing really heavy. And what that does is once you tape up your little greenhouse here, you don't really want to have to open it up to get in there. And I had so many seedlings in there that their roots ended up all tangled together and they were just, they had to compete for room. So I almost want to spread my seeds out like I'm planting them in a regular seed starting tray rather than seeding them so heavy. Um, and when you have dry soil to begin with, it's hard to keep them right where you want them when you water them in initially. So this is perfect, look at this. So I'm squeezing the soil, no water's coming out, but it holds its form. So let's fill this up. You know, the other thing that winter sowing, this kind of reminds me, because see how big the reservoir is? Way bigger than your regular seed starting trays, which eliminates the need to transplant into bigger ones. You know, if you start seeds inside, there's a few things I normally have to bump up into a bigger pot and you don't have to do that with this method. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start with the green globe artichokes, which I got down at my parents' garden center. These are kind of bigger seeds. I'm gonna only start, I think, four different locations for these. Just don't judge my nails here, they're pretty dirty now. So last year, I would have just spread these seeds all over the top of the soil surface. This year, if I have them like this, then I can get in with my trowel and kind of cut them apart when I'm ready to plant, make it much better. So I'm gonna put three seeds in each one of these holes. See that? It's just about perfect. I'm gonna cover them over. And then I've got some vermiculite down here. This is probably not necessary, not on everything, but it does, it does help, I, I know, in indoor sowing tremendously to help keep moisture levels stable. And then we've got a water bottle here, and this is my initial water in. And for those of you who live in a real wet climate, this might be the only time you have to water them until they're about ready to be planted out in the garden. For me, I'll probably have to water them Oh, I don't know. Maybe since I'm using the different soil mix and the vermiculite, maybe once a week I'll check on them. Hopefully I won't have to water them much. Where did we get this? Is this a Crescent Garden? Yeah. Yeah. I used this in a recent uh, herb seed starting video, this water bottle right here. And a lot of you guys wanted to know where I got it and it's from Crescent Garden. Try to find the link maybe and put it down below. They or... sent it like three years ago. I know, it's the first time I've ever used it. Um, they did send it a long time ago, but it sure is nice. I mean, it still works when you tip it upside down and all that business. Okay, so that is done right there. I'm gonna grab my duct tape. Last year I used the clear packing tape. Don't do that. It doesn't stick very well at all. Can't really see if I'm doing that right. Oh, I think I made it all the way around. Oh, nice. Yeah, with the clear tape, I had to go around like three times so it could stick to itself rather than trying to make it stick to the water jug. Of course, it would help if it wasn't so damp out here. Now you need to label. So last year I put the labels in the permanent marker on the water jug up here, which I'm gonna do still today. 
but I'm also gonna write it on the duct tape as well because I think it holds better. I heard that from a lot of you guys. So, okay, hold on. Gotta get down for this part. Oh, that's hard. Maybe I can tip it a little bit. By the end, when I was ready to plant stuff out last year, I could barely read what I had in each one of these. Ideally, you'd be put, maybe I'll put a stake inside the rest of them too, just so I've got extra, extra identification. Green globe, I was gonna write golden globe orange. <laughs> okay, and then I'm also gonna date it. One, four, 21. That one's done. So basically all we do is we take this finished little greenhouse and we set it outside somewhere. Um, somewhere where it's semi-protected in that it's not gonna get wind like crazy. Um, last year I put mine right in front of the greenhouse, which is what I'll do again. If you put it up against a building, like on the south side of the building, where it's gonna catch some radiant heat off of that building, um, I mean, it's a really good protected spot, but um, it might dry them out a little bit faster if they stay a little bit warmer than they would somewhere else. So just kind of keep that in mind. But anyway, that's basically all I'm gonna do for the rest of these seeds right here. I don't know if I've got enough jugs to plant all of these things or not, but we'll see how far we can get. done these are my last two right here I actually brought out 20 packets of seed and I had 20 water jugs I didn't even plan it that way but I want to show you where they're all going out here they're just right outside the greenhouse door kind of lined up along with all of our pots full of bulbs the more the merrier out here oh, I love it and you can see that it does create quite a mess um, of course, you probably don't have to make this big of a mess, but I wanted to do it out here in the greenhouse as opposed to in the studio because of the nature of the project. So at this point, since they're all watered in, it is raining outside and they do have drain holes, they should be fine for a long time. If we have an extended dry period, I will have to go ahead and check on them and I may need to water them supplementally. Is that a word? supplementally so keep that in mind and it, it's all dependent on your climate so to me there are a couple of drawbacks when it comes to winter sowing which they may not be drawbacks to you um, because I think it depends on everybody's growing situation but the first one is it's not super efficient in terms of maximum production if you have seed trays that are specifically made to start seedlings and grow lights and shelving and all of that already you can produce a ton in a small amount of space which that may not be the case for you you may have a small space where you just want a handful of plants or you may just be getting started with seed starting and you just want to try something out this is a really good way to just experiment a little bit um, so you know everybody's situation is different there the second thing is and which this really probably doesn't matter to most people it kind of matters to me a little bit but aesthetically it's not nice to look at to see a big grouping of water jugs plastic jugs sitting on the ground somewhere out in my garden like it's not the best look so if you can tuck it away or hide it away somewhere which I may do I may move them back behind the greenhouse so we don't see them but I find that I forget about stuff if I can't see it. So it's one of those things, it may not matter to you. And in the end, it doesn't matter to me either because it's just something fun to do this time of year and get some stuff going. So that's it, you guys. That is my winter sewing for this year up to this point. I may put some more out there as I get more water jugs or if I find more containers that will work. Um, I might pop some more out there, but it just makes me feel good to have something going and something to look forward to in the way of some really fun, cold tolerant plants. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to see the process. Let me know if you start winter sowing. I would love to know your experience with it. I learned a lot through the comment section last year of this video and of some of my update videos, and I was able to implement some of those things this year. So thank you for that. So thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.